Hi there, spaceman. Are you ready to go on an adventure? Well, that's great. First thing, though, is your life insurance paid up? Oh, that's okay. Don't worry. I think this is going to be fun. You still want to go? That's the spirit. Okay, hang on tight, because this thing goes pretty fast. Woo! Yeah, there you go. Hi, YouTubers. It's Phoenix Talon, and we are in Space Engineers again. And welcome back to the multi-utility test area. I am standing on Optimus Prime. Okay, so what are we doing here today? Well, let me go ahead and show you around. I, I have this new ship that I'd like to show off. There it is. Oh, upside down. I guess there's no up or down in space, but that was upside down. Okay, so here's the ship. And like you saw in the introduction, or hopefully it would be the introduction. We'll see how that turns out. This ship has a secret below it. We'll go take a look at that secret. Honestly, the ship is just, you know, eye candy for the, uh, the device. I really could care less about the ship. All right, so what are we looking at here? Well, to sort of explain, I'll tell you that it is a way of getting items from one location to another. A little while ago, a couple of weeks, maybe a month ago, I was watching a video from Wasted Space. Love his videos. Very awesome. And he was trying to work out doing a mass transit system. Well, I had already worked out a system as well, uh, but it didn't work out very well. Uh, and his wasn't working out very well either. So I said, you know what? I am going to make this work, by goodness. And I finally did. So without further ado, let's go ahead and test this thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and sit down in this seat right here. All right, there we go. And if you'll notice, um, we've got a lot of mass generators on here. We've got gravity generators underneath, and there's more hidden. There's also some timers back here and all of that. And I'll show you more in depth a little later, but I'm sure you all want to see the device work. So let's go in here, and we'll start the timer. Just ignore all this other mess for now. And let's start. It has a two-second countdown. It's going to release there in the back, that back connector. We have a gravity generator that's slowly pushing us out right now. And the thrusters are holding us steady. And we've also got stabilizing gravity that's keeping us upright, left, right, uh, sideways, right, you know, all that stuff. And then here in a second, we're going to reach a uh, threshold that's going to fire off those other gravity generators. And then we're going to take off. There we go. All right. Now, once we've taken off, the uh, sensors that are on this actually turn off the thrusters. Okay. Then when we start getting close to the other one, they're going to go ahead and turn back on. Okay. So here we go. Uh, almost there. Uh, this thing, incidentally, is about three kilometers away, 3,000 meters, give or take. Um, and let's see, how fast are we going? Oh, wrong button. There we go. Uh, only going about 67 meters per second, and that's fine. Um, we don't really want to go much faster than that. All right, here we go. And I'll back up a little bit so you can see this thing get caught by the gravity incoming. All right, and there we go. Uh, see, the aim doesn't have to be exactly perfect uh, in order to be caught and stabilized. Um, that's the cool thing. And then it very slowly, slowly, slowly drags you back in. Okay? So it's not, uh, it's not a real quick uh, launch and recovery. It's very slow. It's very controlled. Everything here is measured perfectly um, for this uh, ship or transit ship, whatever you want to call it. And you can have this being as far away as you want. The issue I was having with the collector and uh, mass firing or asteroid firing, whatever you want to call it, out of a connector was that um, 
Oh yeah, and as you get close enough, I almost forgot to say, uh, you get close enough, it turns on the connector, and then once you're connected, it'll go ahead and lock. Uh, the landing gear here are not actually necessary um, for launch and recovery. They're more for uh, moving the ship. So what you'll do is lock those before you move the ship. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and we'll fire it off back so you can see it return, just so that you know it's not like a fluke, like, oh, you get lucky once. You know, you're sure you can hit a target. All right, let's go ahead and start. And while this is going, it just does the reverse sequence. And the other side that we already left was reset to catch us. Uh, just like this one was reset to launch us after it was after we were caught, if you will. So we got launch and catch. Uh, so like, like I was uh, saying, and I'm sure this is kind of the fun part, so we'll take off quick. Um, what was I saying? My train of thought got derailed. Oh, yes, of course. Um, the mass problem. Well, I think it's like a, a nerf to the game uh, is that if you fire off uh, asteroid pieces, rock pieces, any kind of pieces, even missiles and things like that, um, they disappear after less than a thousand meters. Or not, um, and, and it's not even that you can turn off the trash collection or trash removal or whatever in the game. You can turn that off and it still will remove them. You can turn up your number, max number of objects allowed and you know, max it out and it will still, it will still delete them. So I think there's like a, a, a built-in feature or something that does not allow you to fire asteroids or rocks over long distances. So uh, it had to be a ship to launch and recover. So that made things a little bit more difficult um, you know, because, oh, there you go. As you can see, you don't, aiming is kind of tough, so you, you're not going to get it dead on, um, and you're not going to be able, uh, to aim perfectly. So you got to have a collection system that allows for a margin of error, um, because under perfectly controlled circumstances, yes, you know, I can set up a gravity generator at one end with a connector and at the other end a gravity generator with the connector and and uh, you know it, it should nine times out of ten uh, launch and recover perfectly okay um, so there you go um, it, we can go ahead and uh, uh, actually you know what I was gonna go to the other ship because it's in the light a little bit better so let's do that actually um, but I'll explain how this works. Uh, right now we're connected to the ship itself, so there's going to be a lot of stuff. Uh, but if you look at the timers here, um, you've got uh, just these right here, timer, uh, block, far connector, far connector, one and two, uh, far side catch, launch, one and two, there should be another catch, there we go, okay, yeah. Catch one and then reset for launch and reset for catch. Uh, that's all the timers you really need. The reason it's called FAR is what I did was I had <laughs> two, when I was making the prototype, I had near and FAR. <laughs> and so FAR ended up being the one that I uh, cannibalized into the ship. So <laughs> just ignore the fact that it says FAR. You don't really need that. Um, and then as far as launch goes, we just go ahead and start the timer. We can trigger now. Uh, we don't need the two-second delay. It'll go ahead and trigger. Um and when it goes ahead and triggers, it starts the sequence, and the sequence ends with catch reset. Uh, well, or something like catch reset, if you will. Uh, that gets it ready to go ahead and receive us when we come back. So all you really need to make this work is two of these machines. You, you need either attached to a ship so that you can move it, or you need it to wear... Um, uh, it's on a turret, which is attached to a station. You could do it that way. Um, but needless to say, you're going to, once you park this somewhere and aim it, you're not going to move this ship. Um, so if it's a mining support ship, uh, which this one is designed to be right now, uh, it, it's going to be something that you put in there as like a temporary base, right? Um, it's going to move, it's not going to move, it's going to stay there and it's going to be perfectly aligned with its uh, sister ship, okay? Or if it's a turret, it's going to be perfectly aligned with the uh, opposite end, whatever it is, ship or turret, okay? 
So you're not going to want to move this thing around once you do get it aligned. Um, it's not that hard to align. It took me about five, ten minutes to do it um, on one ship and then about another five, ten minutes to do it on the other ship. Uh, it certainly saves a heck of a lot more time than what it takes to actually put this thing out there. Um, just the machine part is uh, very easy to build. Uh, it doesn't take much. Like you saw, only a few timers. There's only a handful of gravities. There's four stabilizing gravities. There's three firing gravities. There's a pulling gravity, which is what's pulling us in right now. And then there's a pushing gravity, which actually pushes us out and gets us into launch position. Uh, as far as the ship that we're in right now, uh, this thing, it's battery powered. You can make it reactor powered if you want. Um, there's really no rules on that. I would hesitate against solar power because as you can see, we're in the shadow right now, so it wouldn't really work. Also, these uh, mass blocks do take up a lot of energy. Um, so you're going to want something more substantial than just uh, solar power. Okay, so let's go ahead and go take a look at the ship. I know that's probably not what everyone is interested in, but I don't care because this is my video and we're going to go where I say. <laughs> All right. Um, I apologize for the frame droppage. Uh, I don't know what's going on right now with my computer. Um, but occasionally with space engineers, I'll get a little bit of frame rate drop. And it's usually when I build a, a big ship like this. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and pull back so we can get a good look at it. And actually, we could do most of this in spectator mode, I guess. But let's go ahead and see what the ship looks like from out here. All right, there we go. OK, so um, we've got four main nacelles, uh, two in the rear and two in the front. The two front pods are much uh, smaller than the two rear ones. Uh, in the front, you've got a, a cargo uh, handling system. The way this works is you would ply a ship in here. Uh, and if it got right about here uh, in front of this hole on all of these, uh, there's a sensor that will trigger if you're about in this area coming in or if you come over the other top or the top on the other side. And it'll go ahead and pop up this connector with, that's on a piston. And then you can connect a cargo uh, ship to this or you can you know, connect a cargo, uh, some cargo crates, whatever you want to do. And as long as you leave those there, it's uh, uh, set to sense a small ship. So uh, it'll work really well for like mining ships and, and uh, whatnot. Uh, you got a couple of guns up here uh, and a couple of below. Those are just there for um, uh, in case you have uh, meteors turned on in your game. Uh, I wouldn't use these to defend the ship. I would just get the heck out of Dodge. Uh, this thing's got a great turning radius. Great turning radius. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've had to turn down the gyros to about 50% on this because if you haven't turned up any more than that, the doors start to fly off on the, uh, the uh, bay here, uh, the landing bay, and the pistons start to fall apart up here on the connectors uh, up here. Also, there's a connector in the aft, which we'll get to here in a second. Um, the connector in the aft is just in case you want to connect something in the back that's a little larger. There we go, right here. It's on a piston, so that'll come back, uh, you know, fully extend as far as you want. All right, and then the way into the ship is right through here. So we'll go ahead in here. Oh, there's gravity too. Okay, uh, I did not press T to open this. Uh, the door is uh, triggered by a sensor right there, okay. So there you go. I, I don't like pressing T to get into doors. Uh, same with these doors right here. Yeah, I hate pressing T. All right, so uh, medical up here. And, and really, this ship is, is not really finished finished. Um, there's more stuff to do. The buttons are here for a reason. Because once you align this ship, you're not going to want to get into a cockpit and risk moving it around. So all of your ship functions, you're going to want to do through buttons here, OK? So cargo doors, which there are buttons down there for them. But in case you want to activate them from here, 
um, locking stuff down, if you will. Maybe there's a button you want to make sure nobody can open the cargo doors. Um, you're going to want buttons to go ahead and fire off and reset the device below. So you want to set those up um, so that you you know you can fire it manually from here. So and then um, also you'll be able to do cargo transfer uh, from there or down here. See, so it makes it very easy, and this is kind of like a little command area. Okay, so uh, a person that I was originally starting to build this with, um, he didn't stick with me to finish it. As a matter of fact, um, this was his major contributing factor right here was this gravity and the very top bridge here. So, uh, you know, kudos to him for that. Uh, everything else is uh, pretty much just me. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, bittersweet. Well, we'll go ahead and I'll show you what he did, which is pretty cool. So you come up this wall, gravity shifts on you, come up this wall. So now you're, remember I said there's no up or down in space, right? So now you're on the ceiling, but not really. But anyway, so you're like, well, how do I get down there, right? So you come over here, boop, and there you go. It flips you around. That's pretty cool, huh? I thought that was pretty neat. Very, very in, in, uh, inventive, ingenuitive, whatever you call that. Um, and it gives you a really good view of the rest of the ship, so you can see everything that's going on. So it's a very nice bridge. And then to get down, same process, just in reverse. Boom, there you go. And then, whoops, wrong way. There we go. Come around. And this is actually pretty easy to set up. Um, but on this particular ship, you have to be careful because the gravity is set in such a way that uh, it doesn't interfere with the machine below. And any ship that you integrate this into has to be set up in a similar fashion. Okay, so we come down here. We just fall. Now in a survival or in a survival game that wouldn't work because you'd die. Okay, so this cockpit is actually belongs to the machine below. I'm gonna call it the rubber band because that is actually what it kind of does. So you go in here and we're not gonna move it around because that would be really bad. Um, but as you can see, and actually I need to turn on. Oh, not that one. This one. Game crosshairs. There we go. Okay, so I know you can barely tell, but the crosshairs are pretty much aligned with the, uh, the aiming point on the way other side of this thing, way on the other side over there. And that's how you have to aim it, actually. It's that easy. You aim to the aiming point, and as long as both ships are pointed in relatively the same position, like let's say they both agree on a north, then it's going to work. All right. And you can launch everything from there. Okay. All right. We'll go ahead out here. Oh, you know what? You can't really see much with the lights off. Sorry about that. Okay. So we're going to go over here. And uh, you've got reactors down here. Um, what I Oh, what I forgot to show you over here is... Uh, where did I put them? They're hiding. I can't see them from here. I'll have to turn jetpack on. Here we go. Uh, you've got an assembler here, a refinery there, and then on the other side, uh, you've got the same thing. So they mirror each other. Symmetry was used very heavily in this ship. I don't generally like to use a lot of symmetry, but um, it I think it did well for this particular style of ship. Um, okay, so if you want to go ahead and open your cargo doors, um, there are a few mods in here. Uh, I have the uh, angled uh, angled blast door mod right there. Um, you know, blast door pieces. I have that single button mod. Um, can't think of a lot of other things. Uh, thruster, armor thruster mod. I, I like that one. If you want to get in the ship, you can go around. Okay, so. Um, oh, you know what? Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to show you this thing. Actually, not the ship. I care less about the ship. It's nice, but it's just a little get around ship. It's a putt putt ship. All right. So now, whoop, wrong direction. There we go. We're going to come up here so that you can see these things pop up. I'll just fly through them. 
and the frame rate drop again. Must be this ship. Maybe it's got a lot of tries. There we go. Oh, go back. See, so if I was a cargo ship, I could come over here and drop off my supplies, and then when I uh, took up whatever I dropped off and then left, it would come down. See, they all do that. That's what I was going to show you right there. See, so small ship will do that. Um, I like these kind of uh, dual open doors. I also like having the glass in there. Um, when I was doing that, I thought, oh, you know what? I really would like to be able to see out of my cargo bit, or uh, sorry, my hangar bay. So there we go. We'll go ahead and land. There we go. All right. So I like that. And uh, that's pretty much the whole ship. Uh, it doesn't uh, have a lot to it. The whole point of it was not the ship, but the actual machine. Um, the actual machine is right here underneath. Um, there's the timers for it. Um, there's the sensors for it. Doesn't take that many. Just a couple of sensors here, here and there. Um, you got these sensors right here. Uh, of course, it's part of the conveyor system because the whole point of it is to be able to transfer materials. So then what you can do is you can go ahead and uh, as you're mining, you can use the antennas to just fire this thing off. Um, you know, and if you're using drones, so much the better. You can control them from the ship and then you can just keep firing this thing back and forth. Um, delivering supplies and having them uh, deliver materials, uh, like, you know, materials to build other ships, for example. Okay, so uh, I'll leave you with uh, firing this thing off one more time, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll call it a day on this video. And I wanted to thank you for watching, and if you like it, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you don't like it, still like, comment, and subscribe, because... Uh, you know, that's that's what we do, right? We gotta we gotta support each other here. All right, so uh, happy engineering, and I, I hope you all enjoy your time in space.